Okay, this week on Tech Talk, we're going to be talking about Starlink, uh, what it can do, what it can't do, and where it's going. What I'm going to do is we're going to utilize Mike Rabilio's knowledge. He's from Marine Data Solutions, and he's going to give us an update on what's going on with Starlink. Okay, so Starlink, yeah. constellation of low Earth orbit satellites. They're all spinning simultaneously. They all look like Teslas, right? Exactly. Okay. And they intermittently send internet to a uh, land terminal that's on your boat. Okay. And there's two that'll work on the boat. One's called an RV, the other one's called a maritime. How much is the RV one? RV is $600 for the hardware, $135 a month for the airtime. That's not bad. It, it's, yeah, and I'll, you want me to explain the differences right now? Yes. Okay, so the RV is now, has been moved to best effort service, which means it does not have any priority anymore. So when you're with your RV unit, whether you're on land or whether you're somewhere on the water in the Bahamas, all the other dishes around you have priority over you. I heard that a lot of guys were on the RV and a cruise ship pulled in and a vacuum sucked all the internet out and they were kind of like pissed. That's exactly what happened. So the, the cruise ship's got the maritime version, right. which has priority service. Can yachts get the maritime version? Yes, they can. It's $10,000 for the hardware and 5000 a month for the airtime, Oof. which in the big picture is actually affordable. Compared to it, other... Compared to the old VSATs that were out there. Now, Marine Data Solutions, your company, you, you guys put this out. Through. This is a cellular-based yes. system. Yes. This is good for about 20 miles offshore. Yes, with the correct antennas, yes. Okay, so if you had this, and then you want to go really offshore, uh, and you get Starlink, you have those two options. Yes. And is it is it the same thing? Is it unlimited data? Is it... What, what, what are the... What's going on? So the maritime version is capped at five terabytes a month for $5,000. When you go over that five terabytes, you have to pay $2 a gig. My son uses five terabytes <laughs> on Xbox. Yeah, okay. it's, it's uh, understandable. The RV version is capped at one terabyte, but because you're not priority service, the speed is limited to a maximum of 50 megs down. So they're saying the speed on the maritime is between 50 and I think it's 260 and on the RV it's 5 and 50 is what they're saying you can expect for speeds now. Now I know you're working closely with Starlink on a lot of things because this is a telecommunications company. Uh, there's talk online about geofencing, there's talk online about if you have the RV version and you're moving it shuts down. Is there any truth to that? Yes. Oh. What I hear is that when you're over 10 knots the RV does stop working but it doesn't do that everywhere. Like there's people off of Baja, Mexico, where it's working great at 20 knots, and then there's people in the Bahamas and it stops working at 10 knots. So some are having it and some aren't. We can't tell if it's geographically a problem or if it's just the equipment got a different software update. We, we can't tell yet, it's so new. But there are people with RV having problems in motion, for sure. Okay, and where do you see Starlink and yachts going say in the next 12 months where where do you see everybody where where's where are we going to end up with this because it's like nobody knows right it, it's all it's the wild wild west right now with starlink they're changing the rules as they go every day um but my expectation is going to be that the rv units will become less and less usable because they are not a priority system and the more boats and ships and cruise ships that are out there with the maritime version that's high priority they're going to take the bandwidth that's available in that location. And it's not just a maritime version. So if you have a home or a business version in the Bahamas, those people with a home and a business version get their priority service and the RV gets whatever's left over. So the RV is going to become less and less of a solid option. But okay. there are other things coming that will help it. Okay, last question. Where's the coverage for this? You, you have this wonderful map. This is your, this is your network. Yes. This yeah. is really cool. Yes, this is our people. Here. Okay, but where, where's Starlink? Where, where is that available? On the Starlink website, they've got a coverage map, and it changes constantly as they launch more satellites. Is it in Europe? Yes, yes. The, the Med is completely covered. Uh, a lot of South America is covered now. I know Australia is completely covered. Uh, I think uh, 
Indonesia and some of those areas are completely covered so now. So there's a lot of coverage. Definitely the Caribbean, the Bahamas, yes. New England, yes. Florida, Gulf of Mexico, yes. all that. Yeah, that's uh, that's all covered real well now. So basically, I guess what I'm gathering from this is it's it's work in progress. Yes. But with the cost involved, and let's say let's say you're a Florida, Bahamas, Caribbean boat. This system actually covers a lot of that ground, too. It does. It covers all of it. Okay, so maybe a hybrid of both? So what's coming is the problem with Starlink is that there's not enough satellites up there yet. There's less than 4,000, and the constellation is scheduled to be 30,000. So we're at 10% of coverage right now, or, or a little more. So there's a lot of times when there's just not a satellite up there, and so you have a two-minute gap of no service. Or maybe which, you which, have a 30 second gap which of no people service. are experiencing right and yeah. that's what a lot of people are having happen right now so between losing priority status and being throttled on the RV and you don't have that quite as many satellites as we need there's dropouts in the service so what we've got coming is equipment that will blend the Starlink and the 4 and 5g systems so it will eliminate those dropouts so when they're when 5g and Starlink are together it's going to be Seamless. Faster than both of them singly. So. And when one of the other drops out, the other is going to give you what's available. So what we're trying to do is eliminate the dropouts. Okay. So And it's coming. And over time, it, it'll be fixed with Starlink, but they've got to launch another thousand is that satellites. What, is that what you're doing? Launching satellites? No. Well, I know, you, I know you put one up the other day. No, I mean, marine data is going to kind of put a hybrid system? Yes, okay. yes. So we're working with several manufacturers to, uh, and we're testing now to get that equipment ready to go where you're going to be able to blend Starlink and 5G to have a seamless service no matter where you go. All right, gang, that's Tech Talk. Uh, it's, it's work in progress. Uh, there's, no, there's no cut and dry answer on what's going on, but there's a lot of stuff on the horizon. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Thank you. All right. Okay. So they all left, and they left this system running. This is the Marine Data Network system. You can see one more toys up in uh, Washington. There's boats down in the Caribbean, in the Mediterranean, just in Fort Lauderdale. There's 302 boats. Let me see if I can find Renaissance. Let's see. 250 boats just on the New River. There's Renaissance right there. Look at that. That's Renaissance. That's my boat. Now, the cool thing about this is, as long as this screen's up and running, everybody has data. And then if we just do this, hold on. Why are the phones ringing? And this is the 